Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 36 days to go into your GCSE Higher Maps exam, so keep up the hard work, you're doing really, really well. And today we're going to be focusing on the topic of the quadratic nth term. So if you've got a quadratic sequence, how to find the nth term for that quadratic sequence. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, in this video, I'm going to focus on one particular method. In the description below, I'm going to also put in links to Corp Maths video tutorials on other approaches. And depending on which approach you've seen, you know, your teachers taught you, you might have a different preferred method to me. Um, but in this video, I'm going to focus on one approach. And if you do find that approach useful, fantastic. But if you do like trying other approaches, on the, in the description below, I'll put a link to those other videos. And if you use those approaches and you get the right answer, fantastic as well. In this video, we're going to focus on the quadratic nth term. I'm going to go through some questions, and then there'll also be some for you to try as well. So remember to press pause and try those questions. In today's video, we're going to go through the quadratic nth term. So let's get started. So we're going to find the nth term for 3, 14, 29, 48, and 71. So the first step is to find the first differences. So the first differences are what the sequence is going up in or down in. So here we've got from 3 to 14, that's going up 11. From 14 to 29, that's gone up 15. From 29 to 48, it's gone up 19. And from 48 to 71, we're going up 23. So they're the first differences. Now to find the second differences, we find the differences between those. So it's going to be 4, 4, and 4. And for quadratic nth term, those second differences should all be the same. So in this case, it's 4, 4, 4, which is fantastic. Okay, now, so in terms of the quadratic nth term, think back to your quadratic graphs. Quadratic graphs were graphs in the form of x squared plus so many x's plus a number. Well, the quadratic nth term is in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c. So whenever you've got an nth term that's a quadratic, it'll be in the form of so many n squared plus so many n plus c. Okay, so this is the quadratic nth term, so we need to find the values of a, b, and c. And then that will then, once we know a, b, and c, we'll have the nth term for this quadratic sequence. Now in terms of finding the a, b, and c, the second difference is equal to 2a. So this is equal to 2a. The first first difference is equal to 3a plus b. And the first term in the sequence is equal to a plus b plus c. So they'll be really helpful in finding our a, our b, and our c. And if you watch that Corp Maths video on the quadratic nth term, I explain why that's the case. In this video, it's a revision video so I just want to show you how to find the quadratic nth term. So the second difference is equal to 2a. So that means that 2a is equal to 4. And then if we divide both sides of that equation by 2, we're going to get that a is equal to 2. So we know that a is equal to 2. Fantastic. That's going to be really helpful whenever we're writing down our quadratic nth term. Okay, next would be great if we knew our b. Well, let's look at the first first inference. The first first inference is equal to 11. So that means that 3a plus b is equal to 11. But we know that a is equal to 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. So we get 6 plus b is equal to 11. And then if we take away 6 and take away 6, we get that b is equal to 5. So we now know our a and our b. Now let's find our c. So let's look at the first term of the sequence. And the first term of the sequence is a plus b plus c. So if we do a plus b plus c equals 3, we can find our c. a plus b plus c is equal to 3. We know that a is equal to 2. We know b is equal to 5, so plus 5, and then plus c is equal to 3. 2 plus 5 is 7, so we get 7 plus c is equal to 3. And then if we take away 7 and take away 7, we get c is equal to minus 4. So we now know our a, our b, and our c. So that means we know the quadratic nth term. So the quadratic nth term will be a n squared, well, that's going to be 2 n squared, so 2 n squared, plus b n, so b is 5, so plus 5 n, and then plus c, well c is minus 4, so it'll be just minus 4. So that's the nth term for that quadratic sequence. So that's how you do it. You just write down the first differences, the second differences, the second difference is equal to 2 a, the first first difference is equal to 3 a plus b, and the first term in the sequence is equal to a plus b plus c, and then you can find the values for a, a b, and c. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question. So we've got our next sequence which is 9 13 19 27 can you press pause now and find the nth term of this quadratic sequence okay so the nth term will be in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c and we need to find the values for a b and c now obviously you could use different approaches to this but the approach i'm going to use to find the first differences which are four and then six and then eight, they're the first differences. And then in terms of the second differences, they will be two and two, and that's fantastic because they're both the same and with a quadratic nth term, the second differences should always be the same. So now we just need to find the values of a, b, and c. So the second difference, the second difference is equal to two a. The first first difference is equal to three a plus b. And the first term in the sequence is a plus b plus c. Okay, so in terms of two a, two a equals two. So if we divide by two, we get a is equal to one. 
So we're fantastic. We know now a is equal to 1, or it's going to be n squared. We then got 3a plus b is equal to 4. So 3a plus b is equal to 4. a is equal to 1, so you're going to get 3 times 1, which is 3 plus b is equal to 4. So b is equal to 1 as well. And then the first term in the sequence, we've got a plus b plus c is equal to 9. So a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 1. So we've got 1 plus 1 plus c equals 9. So c would have to be 7. So c is equal to 7. So we now know that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to 7. So we've got n squared plus n plus 7. So that's the nth term. And if you got that, well done. And if you use another approach to do that, fantastic as well. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at another question. And this is one for you to try. It says, find the nth term of negative 1, 2, 9, 20. So feel free to press pause now and find the nth term of the sequence. Okay, so it's a quadratic sequence. So it's going to be in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c, or the nth term will be in that form. And let's find the first inferences. So from negative 1 to 2, that's 3. From 2 to 9, that's 7. And from 9 to 20, and that's equal to 11. So we've got the first inferences. Now we need to find the second inferences. So they will be 4 and 4. And that's fantastic because they're both the same. Okay, now we know that we've got the second difference. So that's going to be equal to 2a. The first first difference, that's going to be 3a plus b. And the first term in the sequence, that's a plus b plus c. Okay, so we can now find our values for a, our values for b, and our value for c. Okay, so we've got 2a equals 4. If we divide by 2, we get a is equal to 2. We've got 3a plus b is equal to 3. Well, 3 times 2 is 6, so we've got 6 plus b is equal to 3. If we take away 6 from both sides, we get b is equal to negative 3. And then finally, we've got a plus b plus c is equal to negative 1. Well, a is equal to 2, so it's 2. We've got plus negative 3, so plus negative 3 plus c is equal to negative 1. Now 2 plus negative 3, that's going to be minus 1 plus c is equal to minus 1. And then that means that c is equal to 0. So we know that a is equal to 2 and b is equal to negative 3. So our nth term will be 2n squared minus 3n. And then obviously c is equal to 0, so we don't need to write plus 0, we just leave that out. So that's the nth term of that sequence. So 2n squared minus 3n. Okay, so we've looked at how to find the nth term for quadratic sequences. Now let's have a look at some of our questions. So here's a question. It says, circle the quadratic sequence. So we've got some sequences. I want you to press pause now and figure out which one of these is the quadratic sequence. Okay, well, the first sequence is going up in 10 each time. That's a linear sequence. So it's not the first one. That's a linear sequence. The second one, well, let's have a look at it. We've got 1, 6, 16, 31. 51. Well, to find if that's a quadratic sequence, I'm going to find the first differences and the second differences. So the first differences would be 5, 10, 15, 20. And the second differences are 5, 5, and 5. And the second differences are all the same. So that means that would be a quadratic sequence. So that is a quadratic sequence. So we've been asked to circle it, so let's circle it. That's the quadratic sequence. And that's it. So let's just have a look at the other ones anyway. So we've got 1, 4, 16, 64, where we're multiplying by 4 each time. So multiply by 4, multiply by 4, multiply by 4. So that's a geometric sequence, a sequence where you're multiplying by the same number each time. So that's a geometric sequence, so that's not right. And then this one, so you might recognize this one as the Fibonacci sequence. We start off with 1 and 1. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, and so on. So it's not that one, that's a Fibonacci sequence. So this one is the quadratic sequence, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So sometimes you might be given the nth term of a quadratic sequence. So here we've got the nth term of a quadratic sequence is n squared plus 8n minus 1. And we've been asked to list the first three terms of the sequence. So sometimes you may need to find particular terms in the sequence. Okay, so feel free to press pause now and find the first three terms of the sequence. Okay, so if we want to find the first three terms of the sequence, we just need to substitute in 1, 2, and 3. So if n is equal to 1, we would do 1 squared plus 8 times 1 minus 1. So 1 squared is 1, so that's 1, plus 8 times 1 is 8, minus 1. And 1 plus 8 is 9, minus 1 is 8. So the first term in the sequence is 8. Okay, next, when n is equal to 2, we're going to do 2 squared plus 8 times 2, take away 1. 2 squared is 4, so we've got 4, plus 8 times 2 is 16, minus 1. 4 plus 16 is 20, minus 1 is 19. So the next term in the sequence is 19. And if n is equal to 3, let's see what we get. We're going to have 3 squared plus 8 times 3, minus 1. 3 squared is 9, plus 8 times 3 is 24, minus 1. 9 plus 24 is 33, take away 1 will be 32. That means the next term in the sequence would be 32. So we find the first three terms of the sequence. If the question said find the 20th term, we substitute in 20, and then that would tell us the 20th term, and so on. So that's it.
Okay, let's have a look at one last question. So this time we've been given the nth term of a quadratic sequence. It's n squared plus n minus 4. And we've been asked to work out which term in the sequence has a value of 128. So feel free to press pause now and figure out which term in the sequence has a value of 128. Okay, so if we want to find out which term in the sequence has a value of 128, I'm just going to write the nth term, the n squared plus n minus 4, and put it at equal to 128, and then solve this equation. And whenever we solve it, we should hopefully find the term in the sequence which has a value of 128. So let's solve this. Now this is a quadratic, so we want it to equal 0. So we've got n squared plus n. Now we've got minus 4. We're going to take away 128 from both sides of the equation to get it equal to 0 on the right-hand side. So minus 4 minus 120 would be minus 132 equals 0. And now we've got a quadratic we need to solve. So let's factorize the left-hand side, and then that's equal to 0. So we have n and n at the front of both brackets. The two numbers were multiplied together to give us minus 132 and add together to give us 1, because it's 1n squared. So I'm going to write plus 12 and minus 11, because 12 times minus 11 would be minus 132. And minus 11 plus 12 is 1, which is fantastic. Now we've got two brackets of times together to be equal to 0, so that means that either bracket is equal to 0, so it means that either n is equal to minus 12 or n is equal to 11. Now in terms of the sequence, we, we won't have the negative 12th term, so that means that n is equal to 11th, so it's the 11th term of the sequence. And if you got that, well done. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've gone through the quadratic nth term. Hopefully you found this video useful. Now you're really, really confident with finding the nth term for quadratic sequences. If you need any extra help with quadratic nth term, remember in the description below, there's the video tutorials there, particularly for those other approaches if you use those approaches. And if you've got the code manager revision cards, card number 54 will be really useful to support your learning on the quadratic nth term. Remember, quiz yourself on the bus, get friends to test you and stuff as well. Just make sure you're really confident with how to find the quadratic nth term. Um, if you're in the five days, there'll be lots of quadratic nth term questions on the higher plus five days. So they'll be quite useful to do that little and often approach to your revision. So the five days will be really useful for you as well. But keep up the hard work. One thing I would say is also at this point too, with 36 days to go into a GCC Mavs exam, I'd recommend lots and lots of past papers to so keep up those past papers, be going through them. Any particular questions that you find tricky on the past papers, don't just leave them out and forget about them. Do make a note of it and think, okay, that was a question on finding the equation of a tangent to a circle. I'm going to go to Cope Mavs later and watch that video tutorial and try those questions on it. And I would highly recommend, you know, if you're making any mistakes or anything that you find tricky, do try and do something about it because it's sort of solves law. They're going to be the questions that come up on the exam. So, you know, they're not going to go away, just sort of come back to them, you know, and make a list. I actually on my iPhone with all my notes sort of section, you know, would jot down sort of things to come back to later, like a to-do list. So maybe we make a to-do list of sort of topics that you need to come back to if, you, if you're doing past papers. But that's it. Keep up the hard work. You're doing incredibly well. Today's topic was the quadratic nth term, so hopefully I'm really confident with that. Tomorrow, there'll be exactly five weeks to go into your GCC Mavs exam, so I'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Cheers. Bye.